Hello and welcome back to Jimbo's PC Builds. Today it's time to add yet another cooler to season two of the Cooler League. <laughs> So without further ado, let's have a look at the cooler that we're going to be adding today. We're going to be adding the Montec Metal DT24 Premium. Now for me, Montec are a, probably a brand that we're all more familiar with for making cases. Um, there's very other, other YouTubers that have reviewed the cases and they, well, hearing sort of lesser quality because they're cut price, they tend to do very well. Um, so I was very interested to see how this cooler would, would fare compared to other coolers. The cooler costs $70, which isn't the most expensive cooler, but it's not the cheapest cooler either. So it puts it kind of in between the likes of, uh, you know, the Thermorite coolers and uh, air coolers, should I say, and also the likes of your Noctuas, which tend to tip over around the $100 uh, mark. So as always, um, we will in do the installation of the cooler, so you'll have the installation montage. Then I will give my thoughts on the installation. Then we'll go through the old testing results, you know, the temperatures and all the other good stuff. And then as always, we'll end up uh, with my final thoughts and conclusion on the cooler. So without further ado, let's get into the install montage.
installation wise not the most complex um, installing the back plate um, you have to put it you know get the four prongs on you put it through pretty standard fare uh, then you have to put a washer on like it was a gray washer the instructions were a little bit vague because there were two types of washers but I was able to figure it out so just keep an eye out for that and then finally you put like a little nut on the end to then secure it um, or with a back plate on sorry so you've got to put the prude then the washers then a, a top plate for the cool to mount on then the nuts to mount it down um, if you're putting this in a new PC where you're putting the back plate through and you've got a surface to put it on it would be an absolute doddle for myself I had to hold up the board you know horizontal vertical even and then put it through and then attach everything to it so not the most difficult in the world then we get to the bit of the installation that I really did not like this is supposed to be called a premium cooler yet to attach both fans to the cooler we had to use the horrible finicky wire clip things which I only normally see with really cheap and nasty coolers Disappointing considering that one of the fans goes in between two of the cooler stacks, which <clears throat> it, it was not ideal because then you have to push it out, put it on one mat one side, then try and push it so it sticks through, then try and attach it to the side and do it in that middle fan. It was a bit of a pain. For the for the price of $70, come on, Monte, you could have done a little bit better than that. It kind of reminds me when I looked at one of their cases at one point, they included fans, but they were connected by Molnex connectors, which nobody wants because they're awful because you've got no control over them. So it kind of is on brand a little bit for Montec for me. But, you know, all in all, it wasn't the most difficult install. Um, just those finicky little bits for me could have been better. All right, so that's the install covered. Let's get on to the test data. Uh, so yeah, let's see how the cooler did. Base temp. The Monte cooler had a base temperature of 17. Um, that was exceedingly low, but I would say I think that is down to the fact that just with the usual fan profile that I use, um, the fans themselves, because of their very reasonably high RPM, Tend, seem to be spinning a little bit more. Um, one of the things I'll cover in the in the conclusion is that I was able to hear an audible K, um, fan whine, like a like a electronic whine from the fans. So I think they're probably going a little bit more than they sh really need to uh, idle. But that will cover why the temperature is so low with nothing happening. Bass sound, and here we go um, with a bass sound of thirty five point two it's not one of the quieter coolers at idle. It was reasonably loud, though if you look, it's towards the bottom of the pile when it comes to this, which kind of reinforces what I was just saying. And I think a large portion of that was that whine I was able to hear. Cinnamon score. So the Montec cooler scored uh, 27,155, which is, to be honest, is towards the lower end um, of, the, um, of, of the scores. Now one of the things I did notice is that it, the temperature that it sort of hit and the noise that it hit was early. So when the CPU was trying to hit its peak performance early and you were getting that initial boost is when you heard the main sound and when, when the temperature went the highest. So I think don't think it managed to maintain its boost for that long which will kind of explain why the score was a bit lower. Again and you'll see this in the temperature, that temperature it went up to wasn't actually that high. Um, so yeah, the score, a little bit disappointing. And max temp. The max temp I just referred to when we're talking about the score was 82 degrees Celsius, which isn't the highest. And you can see, puts it in fairly reasonable good position in the middle of the pack. It didn't thermal throttle and 82 isn't that bad for a 12900K. So, there was, I can confirm with the score that there were no other background tasks running. It's the same setup and the same situation as all the others. Um, so, yeah, it, it just, we just got a bad score on this one. Uh, the max temperature wasn't that bad. Max sound. Oh, boy. That cable wine came really into its own. At 55.6 decibels, that made a lot of noise. It was extremely loud. While I was running the test... Uh, yeah, I couldn't overhear anything else in the area. It was so loud. So it's the only thing that was louder than it was the Deep Pill Assassin 4. So while it hit a temperature of 82, it was working like a dog to do it. So yeah, 
not the quietest of coolers. Scoring ranges. Scoring ranges have been consistent. I probably won't end up changing them uh, during uh, this season. I may look at changing them when we move over to season three. And here we are with the Cooler League uh, table. And you can see that the Montec cooler finished in the bottom half of the table. Um, considering the noise and the score, that's kind of not a surprise. Um, so it finished on 21 points total. It beat the Thermorite Frozen Note and the Up Here Series 2 based on the fact that the peak temperature was lower than the other two because that's the tiebreaker for those. It only finished a point behind the Bits Power Phantom, but realistically, you know, the Bits, the Bits Power Cooler and the Thermal, you know, some of the other coolers in there are a lot cheaper than it. So, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah it's not ideal. But we'll go into further that when we look at the analysis now. So I think the bad score reflects in, in the cost of what we're looking at in the cost per point, uh, if we, based on the score excluding price. So you can see cost, cost, score including price is 17 points, which works out at $4.12 per point, which is up there with the more expensive coolers um, that didn't thermal throttle. So for example, it's more expensive than the Thermal Take Tough Air 710, and it's just slightly cheaper than the Be Quiet Dark Rocket Elite or the Noctua NH. D12L. Um, so yeah, from that point of view, if you look at that from a general score point of view, it's not most ideal. However, if we look at this at just peak cooling performance alone, and we look based on the temperature of 82 degrees and the number of the cost per degree below 100, i.e. below thermal throttling, it comes out at $3.89 per degree, which actually isn't too bad. You know, that puts it fairly favourably compared to a lot of coolers, like the Bits Power Phantom, we were just talking about, is $7.50, and the Thermaltake Tough, uh, Tough Air is $4.25. So from a pure cooling performance point of view, it actually doesn't do that badly. <sighs> so conclusion time. The cooler is behind me over here. And as you can see, it looks very similar to a lot of the other coolers that have the dual fan set up. They've also put a top on it, which you've got RGB around. I would say that the RGB does look a little bit cheap and tacky. You know, obviously with being RGB, it goes faster. Um, but I would say it, it the look and feel just it, for a $70 cooler, I think that could be better. But that aside, cooling performance, great. At a cost, because it's noisy as hell. So for me, it's just a cooler that there's compromises on this. The install wasn't too bad, but there were little things annoying, like the wires that used the wireframe things used to install the fans. The cooling performance was good, but then you've got the penalty you pay where it's so loud. So, with the price of where this cooler sits at seventy dollars, you can get coolers like the Thermalrite coolers that are cheaper. You can heck the the there's a Thermalrite. Um, AIO that's the same price as this which which performs better than it so it's in a difficult spot it's pure cooling performance isn't bad so you can't sit there and say as a cooler is is it bad it's not bad it's not a bad cooler which reflects that it finished middle of the table I just think with the price that you know it you could it could do with being a little bit better for what it is. It's just not offering enough for the price and therefore it, it just loses out to a lot of the other coolers which again reflects where it finished in the table which is middle towards bottom. It's not a bad cooler but it's not a great cooler either. All right I hope you found all that information useful. If you have this cooler and you've installed it and you've not seen, say, the wine that I got from the fans, uh, please l uh, let me know in the comments down below. If you've got any questions on the, uh, the cooler, also please leave comments down below and I'll try and answer as soon as I can. If you've got any constructive feedback on the video, the format, or anything else, please also leave the comments down below. Please don't forget to toss a like on the video because that all helps with the YouTube algorithm. Also, please subscribe. Um, our community is very small, but uh, any further additions would be more than welcome. And if you do subscribe, don't forget to hit notifications. My cadence of videos is relatively low. I try and get one done a month. I don't always meet that due to work commitments, etc. But if you hit that notification, then you, you let know when I do get a video out. All right, that's all the YouTube video stuff out the way. And we'll end it there. And as always, take care. Thank <laughs> you.